Hello, everybody. James Swanick here from Swanick Sleep. Nice to have you here. If you are watching on Facebook, if you're watching live on YouTube, if you're watching on the replay later on, thank you very much. Please do go ahead and post your question. Anything you have about sleep, go ahead and post your question. Say hello to us. In fact, if you're just joining us, why don't you start off by typing which city and state and country you are actually watching from and we are joined on today's show by the lovely tara youngblood who is the co-founder and ceo at chili sleep which is a company that i uh, have invested in and uh, more specifically their wonderful products the uh well it used, i think it used to be called the chili pad but maybe it's called something something different now um tara welcome to the show hi thanks for having me we can clarify yeah. Yeah, um, because we're going to be talking about sleep today. Uh, how was your sleep last night? I was just curious. Like, how how was your sleep, and what was your sleep practice? Yeah, it was it was okay. I have to admit, it was a Saturday night, so I went out with some friends and had some drinks, which isn't good for my sleep. And I know that it isn't, but every now and then, uh, especially now that we've opened up a little bit, it was really nice to to go out with some friends. So I. I didn't have an awesome sleep. It was okay. The chili pad actually really does make a difference on that, but my resting heart rate definitely went down later than it would have without the alcohol. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. My sleep wasn't great either. And the mistake oh, no. I made was I went to sleep too late knowing that I was to get up early in the morning. Where I am do doing this at the moment is in Brisbane, Australia. So I'm in the future. It's tomorrow where, where, where I am. And I knew I'm that I had to be up here. at 6.30 because it's 7 a.m. here. And I, I didn't get to sleep until sort of after uh, after eleven thirty, closer to midnight, and I uh, was up at about six fifteen. So it was a, and then you know when you know you got to get up a little bit earlier, you kind of like you, for me anyway. I don't quite get into that deep restorative REM phase sleep. So the irony of this whole thing, Tara, is that we're both somewhat sleep experts, and we're both coming on here with pretty average <laughs> night sleep. Not being able to brag about our night sleep. Yep, that that seems very difficult. <laughs> I have the same thing. Uh, I'm thinking about going live. Like inevitably, something happens and I, I don't get great sleep. But yeah, uh, Tara, you're the uh, the co-founder and the CEO at Chili Sleep, and you're the author of Reprogram Your Sleep: The Sleep Recipe That Works. Uh, you're a speaker, and uh, you've been on, on TEDx and uh, spoken at the National Sleep Foundation Sleep Show. Uh, I've seen. Um, uh, and hung out with your wonderful husband Todd a couple times at uh, some various uh, sleep exhibitions around around the place and um, and you know I mean I'm the creator of, of the Swanee's blue light blocking glasses so I'm somewhat of a sleep expert and I think yes. let's just touch on the first thing that you mentioned before we we get into science and technology and sleep because you are um, the creators of the chili pad, which I want to ask you about and dig into. But the first thing you said was talking about alcohol. Um, let's talk about the 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 last thing to do, the last kind of like few hours before one goes to sleep at night, and the first few hours after someone wakes up. Because I think there's a there's a I believe the biggest leverage that you can get in your sleep is what you do in those last three hours, and very much what you do in the first. 30 minutes of the day. So why don't you speak to the last few hours and and also maybe the you know the technology of sleeping throughout the night and then I'll sleep to first uh, I'll talk to uh, first things in the mo in the morning. Sure. Yeah. So I always base it on uh, Clifford Sapir of Harvard was the first one to coin the term, but you want to be able to flip that sleep switch. And there actually is a switch to turn on and off and it's unconscious. The good news for both of our companies is it's light and temperature uh, are the two things that are, are sort of our unconscious mind is looking to release the melatonin naturally and on all those hormones that help us get to sleep. So, you know, one of the things you want to do is create that framework. So it's, it's, set up properly to turn off your switch because it's a whole lot easier to flip that switch for sleep. If you've kind of done, like you said, that last three hours is really important. Um, in our modern world, we like to have a bigger dinner and uh, we didn't really evolve that way. Lunch was much heavier and we tend to like want to stack that before dinner. But, you know, keeping keeping food and alcohol out of those last three hours really, really helps a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah, when you when you have food and alcohol, your body's got to digest it and break it down. It's got to go to work, and we don't really want it to go to work, do we? We want it to go to rest. We want it to go to sleep. Uh, and people who who are clinging on to, to drinking the alcohol certainly always try to argue with me, and they'll say, "Oh, but having a glass of wine helps me unwind at the end of the day, and it helps me fall asleep." And my response is always the same, which is. It is true that the alcohol may make you drowsy and may help you to fall asleep. However, the quality of your sleep will be severely compromised um, as a result of you drinking that alcohol. And the same with food, isn't it? Because yeah. you, if you eat within the last three hours, your body's then trying to break down that food. Yeah, so it is really, um, you know, in America anyway, I don't know what the statistics are for Australia but, you know, a majority of Americans use alcohol to fall asleep. It's, it's actually a, a pretty common problem. Um, and what it steals from mostly is your deep sleep. So that's where I talked about my resting heart rate not going down until um, closer to morning because I had a drink. Um, that's where, if, you know, your body wants to get cooler. It wants to be able to settle into that deep sleep. Um, and if, you're, if your metabolism is, is going quickly, you'll actually be hotter. A lot of people that are, are tracking that temperature will realize they're actually hotter that night um, as well from the alcohol. Yeah. And uh, I mentioned before that I was going to talk about what to do with first thing in the morning. Well, actually, at nighttime, uh, obviously, we like to encourage people to block as much artificial uh, light as possible. So we encourage people, obviously, to wear a pair of blue light blocking glasses. This is, you know, Swannies from our company, Swanick. Um, and, uh, you know, because every time you're staring into a screen like this, you're tricking your body and your brain into believing that it's daytime and actually the light is actually stimulating your pineal and pituitary glands and that uh, suppresses your body's um, ability to produce melatonin um, and then first thing in the morning I always encourage people to get as much natural sunlight as possible our skin has receptors in it and when we stand in front of a window and let the sun come in or go outside for just even like two or three minutes and we let the sunlight hit our face or hit our in my case hit our bald heads and uh not as well you have similar haircuts <laughs> yeah uh, we hit our skin it tells our internal body clock our circadian rhythm oh this is daytime and so our body wants to to flood itself with daytime hormones and start to like you know, cortisol starts to rise obviously we don't want a lot of cortisol throughout the day but in the fir first part of the day our body's very high in that and we're wanting to like just trigger like okay this is daytime and then you know, about 12 to 16 hours later from that, the body knowing what time wake up was because it's got the sunlight on it is then going to start to prepare for sleep again. So uh, yeah, it goes back to that sleep switch that I talked about, you know, again, you and I are both in that same thing. And, and for a lot of people, temperature is consistent in their house. And so there is no temperature change, but just like you want it to get dim because the sun's going down, you also want that temperature to um, go cooler in your house or, or trigger it by going outside and walking outside if it's cooler outside. So those same things when you flip it off and then when you flip it back on again, um, it's a, it's, the neurons, it's a clearer mechanism that that's what it needs to do. Yeah. So, well, we're seeing some night shift workers um, come in. We, we've had a lot of conversations about that. I don't know about you, but um, we did a one for one with the COVID to healthcare workers and they're notoriously on shifts and not having great sleep. And so, you know, a lot of, the, we've had a lot of conversations about how to shift your circadian rhythm. We kind of talked about you know, understanding and knowing when that clock is, you can shift it when you travel, like if you're going to Australia and you're going to flip it around. But it is possible to kind of retrain your body to to shift and do that same pattern of on and off, despite um, what time of day it is. Yeah. Uh, if you're just watching, uh, you're just joining us, please do leave a message or ask us a question in the comments below. And we'd be happy to answer your questions. So we talked a little bit about some simple natural things we can do. As natural as putting on a pair of glasses is obviously at nighttime. Um, but you have a wonderful product um, that I uh, have used. I, I, when I was living in Venice Beach, California, uh, for about 18 months or so, I used it. Um, you were kind enough to, to, to let me uh, have one of your wonderful um, products, uh, the Chili Pad. So just tell me a little bit about how that uses science and technology to help people sleep better. Why don't you just explain what it is 
what's the concept behind it and how it helps people? Yeah, so it really is all about those temperature triggers that we we talked about. So at night, when you're asleep, your body is trying to drop two degrees by your core body temperature. That's inside. So it doesn't sound like a lot. But when you think about your heart and lungs getting two degrees cooler, that actually has to put a fair amount of heat. And the thermodynamics of that aren't that complex if we were to not have blankets on top of ourselves, if we didn't have that squishy blank uh, comforter and mattress and foam and all that packed around us, all of that actually insulates that heat and makes it very difficult to shed that. So when we talk about sleep, we want to have at least neutral to cool to be able to enhance and, and enable our bodies to drop those two degrees. So what our product does is it kind of works like a radiator for your body. So if you think about your car engine, you have a radiator to keep it cool. And if you didn't, it would overheat. Your body needs that at night as well. And so we really have these water coils that go throughout the mattress and it maintains whatever temperature you set it at. So we do have the chili pad still, which is remote controlled. And it's kind of like your traditional thermostat where you set it and forget it and that it's one temperature. But then we also have the Uller, which allows scheduling. And if you think about it as a smart thermostat, so you can go ahead. And for me, I, I like to warm up to fall asleep, but then that's not really good for my body to actually get great sleep. That's part of that recipe that I discovered. It turns out what makes me fall asleep isn't what keeps me asleep or really helps my sleep. So I have to get cooler once I uh, fall asleep. So that's what it enables you to do. It's a pad that goes over the mattress, isn't it? And, and, and now it's to the point where you can actually have a cool side and a warmer side. So if you sleep with a partner who likes s s cold and you sleep with a partner who likes slightly warm, you can actually have uh, each side of the bed be different temperatures. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, because, uh, you know, Todd, I think, would sleep on a slab of ice if he could. Um, and wow. I like it cool, but not quite that cool. So anywhere south of body temperature, which in the U.S. is that 98 and everywhere else in the world is 37. Um, but if as long as you're sort of south of that, you're actually still enhancing that cooling. So you can actually set it pretty warm and still be enhancing or, and mitigating some of that um, thermogenesis that's happening at night. There seems to be a general consensus that in, in Fahrenheit, 65 to 69 degrees Fahrenheit, a cool temperature seems to be the optimal um, temperature for, for sleep. Is that your understanding somewhere in that, in that range? Yeah. So the problem about throwing it out that way is it doesn't take into effect that thermodynamic environment underneath our blankets. It doesn't take into effect our, our metabolism, our BMI. It makes sense that um, someone with a high metabolism or, or you look at our NFL lineman football players here, uh, those are big guys. They're going to put off more heat and have a different dynamic than, you know, a, a small child. There's a pretty wide variety of, of how much heat's coming off in the middle of the night. So, you know, the biggest thing about setting that room temperature is you've actually, our, our comforters, our, what we put over top of us with our blankets, insulate us from that room environment. So depending, it has to be actually pretty cool for that to translate. At that temperature, you're just mitigating some of the other factors slightly. But you're not really at a spot where you're enhancing sleep or, or optimizing that experience. And that's really where we're at is, is under your blankets, where your body is maintaining that temperature and really influencing that equation. The, the room helps some, but if you figure if you're covered up to your chin, the only ventilation is coming out through your head. And that's where a lot of people will flip their pillows and try to do that. Their head is trying to still vent all that extra heat. Yeah. The best way I could just maybe describe what the, ch the chili pad is, is um, uh, it's kind of feels like a hot water bottle. You know, when when I was younger and I was when I was ill, for example, my mum might make a hot water bottle and stick it under my uh, under my back or under my body. And then, if you're you know frightfully hot in the middle of uh, summer, say, it might be a cool water bottle, right? It might be putting like an ice pack underneath your back instead. So you have that ability to be able to play with the with the temperature when you use the chili pad. Yes. 
Yeah, that and that's really the the advantage. So we're not we're not saying you know go with no air conditioning or you know set your room at a hundred degrees and this this is what it is. It's really an enhancement for that. It's really mitigating and thinking about the temperature inside there. So whatever temperature you want, whatever your metabolism is looking for to help keep you asleep, and a remarkable number of people wake up in the middle of the night and use the restroom and think it's I needed to use the restroom and that's what woke me up. But a lot of times it's actually just that heat equation um, because if you're actually in deep sleep your body emits a hormone that will prevent you from needing to use the restroom um, but if you're waking up you're it's more of a side effect of habit that is saying oh I guess I'll use the restroom um, but it, a lot of times it's heat that's waking people up and they don't realize even a small amount of heat is going to push you out of s deep sleep during that first half of the night especially can a small amount of deep cold also push you out of uh, that deep sleep yeah, you know, it can. Deep sleep, honestly, you can allow, you can really push a lot of limits. You don't actually register temperature um, when it too much when you're in deep sleep, when you're actually in that deep sleep cycle. Um, what it is, is if when you come through those cycles and if you're up in REM sleep, that's when you're going to trigger either warm or cold. And so if you're too warm, you'll just go ahead and wake up or you're too cold, you'll just go ahead and wake up. But for most people, that first half of the night is, although you cycle through all those different kinds of sleep, that first half of your night as your body's trying to drop to its lowest point, that's really the zone of, of best deep sleep. And so that's why, you know, as you mentioned, when you don't go to sleep when you're supposed to, that window just gets shorter. And so it's much harder to get that same quality of sleep if, you're, if you've shortened that window and you really have to be conscientious if you're going to shorten that window from eight hours. You're, that how and why and what are, what are you going to do to help mitigate that change of temp timing? Yeah. Uh, if you are watching and you're listening and you are curious about the chili pad, uh, you can actually get 25% off <clears throat> using a Swanic code. So if you just click on the link on the screen there, uh, if you want to go to uh, chilitechnology.com, but we've actually put a, a direct link straight there. And if you use the Swanic code, uh, which is Swanic25, you will be able to get 25% off. I have used it. It's wonderful. Uh, I re recall using it both in uh, – well, I first started using it uh, in summer and then I ended up uh, using it in winter as well. So in summer I had it run cool and then in winter I had it run warm, obviously. Uh, so that was, that was lovely. Uh, Mel here asks, do you recommend drinking cold water before sleeping? So, you know, a, a lot of this will depend on, on you as a person. So, um, Tim Ferriss, for example, prior to using the chili pad would use an ice bath. So it, you know, that, a real extreme part of that. Um, but you know, drinking cold water will help some, but you, you need to think about over the course of the, the three, four hours after you fall asleep, your poor body temperature is going to drop. So a, just a cold water, um, may not be enough to, to really, indicate that but that cooler shower um will do that um, for some people warming also because it's all about that change of temperature we're looking for some sort of change in temperature to trigger that sleep switch certainly as part of falling asleep yeah i hope that answers your question mel thank you we've got bianca who's watching on facebook and bianca on facebook says i can't get through the day without naps it ruins my bedtime should i avoid naps I'd say if you're really driven to do naps without being like shift work or, you know, when you're a, a true night owl, you can get away with it a lot more. Um, but if it ruins your bedtime, then th that is definitely something where you want to try to push and try to keep that sleep where it should be. Um, I am actually a big proponent of naps in general, but it's about um, making sure you get the if you're if you're struggling to what you are, I would recommend at least tracking your sleep and being able to have a sense on what kind of sleep you're getting during those naps. Um, Cause there are shift workers that will use a polyphasic and they will take naps because they have to. Um, but then they have to be conscientious of, of how much quality sleep and what kind of sleep they're getting and being balanced in, in that approach still. Yeah. Thank you so much for your question, Bianca over on Facebook. And if you're just watching or you're watching on the replay, go ahead and type your question in and we will do our best to have it answered for you. Here and just a reminder: if you click on the link, there is a link there uh, to Chile Technology where you can use the, the code Swanic twenty five for twenty five 
um, percent off. We're talking to Tari Youngblood, who is the co-founder and chief executive officer at Chili Sleep and the, the author of Reprogram Your Sleep, The Sleep Recipe. Uh, so eight hours sleep a night, is that a myth or is that uh, super important? Is that the most important thing over the quality of sleep, Tara? Oh, I love that question. It is one of my favorites, actually. Um, so eight hours is absolutely something that came about as part of the industrialized world. Prior to that, we actually slept in, in multiple phases, at least two, um, depending on which culture you came from. So it's actually because we became uh, driven to have work at the start and end at a specific time that we had a drive to have sleep exist in a particular grouping. And so it is one of my pet peeves. And I think very damning for a lot of people that eight hours is the the one and only sort of holy grail. Um, you know, it, it's more for me, I look at when you look at a 20 year old, they're getting two hours of deep sleep, two hours of REM sleep. You know, that's a good balance. It's a good amount of either of those types of sleep. And so if you can, you know, with the chili pad, um, for sure, using blue light glasses, flipping the switch, timing it, you can actually get that in six hours, it is possible. It's just about being very succinct and making sure you're you're doing it right. Um, Todd, as a night owl, actually doesn't tend to sleep eight hours, but he does do a nap and he loves his um, power naps. So a lot of it is, it's all possible and I think it's very individualized. I think it's a good benchmark of if you're not sure, start with eight and making sure you're waking up and you shouldn't feel tired in the afternoon. You should feel rested if you've spent eight hours in bed. But if you're spending those eight hours and it's not feeling good and you're restless and you're waking up, that's definitely, that means you need to start breaking down sleep and look at, well, what is my recipe to get good quality sleep? Yeah, so interesting. Um, just a clarifying question the uh, with your products, Tara, what is the difference between the chili pad sleep system and the Uller sleep system? Is there a difference? Yeah, so the chili pad is is the remote control. Um, it's sort of that standard thermostat. Set it and forget it. A lot of people like just love that simplicity, and they're not doing a lot of changes in their sleep. So throughout the course of the night, they're they're going to pick that one temperature, and they're they're good to go. Chili pad is absolutely that. Um, the Uller is kind of our next evolution. It has an app. It has scheduling. It it self cleans. Um, so it has a UV light. It has multiple span speeds. So depending on um, what you think of white noise, you can adjust that, you know, and also be able to adjust it as far as boost its performance or, or have it in silent or somewhere in between. Um, so it's kind of just that, that evolution, um, of being able to take it to the next level. Yeah. So we actually have a 15% off code for that as well, uh, on the Ula sleep system. It's just in the comments there. If you use the discount code SWANIC15, so the chili pad is the OG, the original gangster, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That's the one that I used, uh, or you can use the uh, the ramped up model, uh, which is the Ula sleep system, and we have a code there that if you use Swanic 15 for 15% um, percent off. Um, what about caffeine, Tara? What are your thoughts on people who drink cups of coffee before they go to sleep each night? So I, I love that question as well. Todd is definitely one of those people we met um, in college, and he would have a full pot of coffee and then literally go to sleep. Now, if I were to do that, I'd be wired into next week. And that is not how I work at all. But there is about five to 10% of the population that their caffeine receptors are basically don't work. Um, and they don't work like they do for the rest of us. So caffeine for most of us really should stay, uh, again, outside of that bed bedtime window. But there are definitely people like Todd that it doesn't matter at all. So again, that's one of those things that I hear when I give talks a lot. They'll hear certain tips and they're like, well, that tip doesn't work for me. So I threw them all out. It's important to keep keep in mind that not all sleep tips, not all health tips are going to be applicable to you. You really have to kind of A-B test and figure out for yourself, yes, this is definitely something that triggers me. And for most people, they either know, yes, caffeine is it. And if you have a cup of coffee in the morning, you're going to feel it. Or if you don't feel it, then please use other tips to make that recipe work. Yeah, we can... We, we, in many ways, we can generalize, but then there are always unique cases or there's always a percentage that, that you know, it's 
personalized health, right? Like we can say blanket statements like you should eat lots of vegetables and you should limit your red meat intake. But then there are people out there who just do the caveman diet and need nothing but red meat and all of their markers seem just fine. Yeah. Whereas other people who eat less red meat um, have, you know, get very high cholesterol and, you know. Yeah, you know, I, had, I had a great aunt and I swear she was firecracker and she smoked and drank and, you know, lived into her 90s and was a firecracker till then. So all the metrics like that would say, don't do that. Um, you know, there's, there is, there's always going to be exceptions to that. It is all about you finding and, you know, kind of the language of being a CEO for your own body and understanding, yes, this is what works for me, or that is not it. And even between light and temperature, you'll find that there's tons of people that are very sensitive to the light. They should absolutely be using glasses and possibly all day just to manage that. You know, it's not even just a bedtime thing. Um, and yet sem- temperature is very similar. There's a lot of people that like, oh, that's definitely a big issue for me. Yeah. So what you're saying is that I should go out, buy a pack of cigarettes, buy a six pack of beer, get some McDonald's, get a McDonald's happy meal on the way home tonight and crawl into bed around 1230 because I'm the exception to the rule. Ooh, I'd cross your fingers really hard and hope that your genetics is that one in a million that is going to make that work. And if it is, God bless you. But uh, for the rest of us, <laughs> yeah, doesn't seem to work. But uh, again, there's always exceptions, and it's that's why it's important to like really, really own your recipe. Yeah, we've got uh, one of our Facebook viewers right now, Sharif Soror, Soror is saying, "LOL, laugh out, laugh out loud." Uh, Sharif is thinking, why would you, you eat a McDonald's? Burger King every time. Uh, All right. So uh, we are talking to Tara Youngblood, CEO uh, and uh, of uh, Chili Sleep of uh, and author of Reprogram Your Sleep, the sleep recipe that works. And we're talking about how to optimize your sleep quality using science and technology. Uh, Anything else? That you might use to maybe any other technology just besides the chili pad or the ULA that you use to optimize your sleep or have used in the past, Tara? You know, actually, a big part of my recipe goes back to, again, you know, starting the day, flipping off that switch. I, I mimic the, the idea that if you go outside in the morning um, and get that outside, you know, I call it the stress monster, um, probably because I have four boys and I've had to explain this to them over the years. But um, you wake up in the morning and the stress monster is, is good. He helps you get going. It's, it's part of what gets you moving. But if he gets really big throughout the day, and, and right now there's a lot of stressors out there uh, between pandemics and everything else that, that can be pushing you every time you look at social media, that ups that stress monster. And by the time you get in, into bed at night, if that stress monster has grown throughout the day and you haven't squished them down to keep them nice and manageable, that's where a lot of people will be... Um, you know, struggling to fall asleep, that racing mind, all of those kind of things. And so, you know, it is about getting the endorphins, going outside. Um, dopamine is a good, anti, you know, response to that. Get stuff done, make a list, accomplish something. Even in weird times, you can still say, I did this, I, I made my meals, I got my bed made, all those little things, do that list. Um, another great one is oxytocin. Um, that's my favorite because I have um, teenage boys, so I make them give me five hugs a day. Um, that's a good other way to manage stress. Even in quarantine, who's ever in your quarantine team, we still need to touch each other and connect. Um, all of those are, are easy ways to help keep that stress monster managed. But that's a big part of my recipe, breathing, gratitude, meditation, any of those things you can do to keep that stress monster. He is not friendly to sleep. Yeah. <clears throat> I, uh, I'm, I have a, a gratitude journal here and um, I write down 20 things that I'm grateful for uh, each morning. I've got pages and pages of things that I'm grateful for. And that certainly helps me um, throughout the day. I tend to do it first thing in the morning. Um, rather than at nighttime, but there's no reason why you couldn't do it at nighttime. This is a, a reminder of what was great about today because all too often, uh, speaking from my own experience, sometimes I'll uh, get to the end of the day and I'll have a little bit of stress. I'm pretty good. Like I'm not I'm not a high-stress person, but sometimes, maybe last night actually, I was had a little bit of stress. I think I was working a little bit too late and 
thinking about the week ahead and then when I go to sleep, my mind's working and then as soon as I wake up, I'm thinking about about work. I think I'd like to change that. I think I will commit to change that. What do you think, Tara? Yeah, I love it. You know, we started a habit that came from the boys when they went to summer camp. And that is, you know, what was your daily good for the day? So what did you do to sort of give back? What's some small thing that you contributed? What was your highlight of the day? And what were you grateful for? And so those are our three questions that we close the day with when I'm tucking them in. And then honestly, they usually ask it back, which is really great. Um, and be able to have that conversation of, yeah, this turned out it was a really good day. Because when you reflect on almost every day, we're very blessed in our world that we can look back and say, yes, every day there was something to be grateful for, something that I did was was good. And um, that that helps settle that mind a fair amount. Uh, Elena Frederick over at Swanick is saying, I hear you, Tara. I have five boys and that stress monster is pretty big. Morning routine is so important. I also avoid media to help with self care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, putting, putting rules, yeah, putting rules around mm-hmm. that is is pretty important. Especially, it, it can it just sucks you in, and it gen- generally doesn't do good stuff for your your stress monster at all. Getting sucked into all of those issues, um, trying to you know a lot of the phones now have given you like screen time and and being able to keep track of that. So it's you know I would set you know good goals for yourself and and try to continue to be you know when did I use my my phone? When was I on electronics? And did I keep it in the windows that I that I wanted to, or did I sort of sneak in you know binge watching netflix is a really hard one especially you get stuck and it's like just starts the next thing but it is really important um to try to keep that you certainly out of that bedtime window and to try to mitigate that taking over a bigger chunk of time than you want it to yeah i find um uh, it, it's been challenging for me to pull away from consuming so much media. I used to be a newspaper reporter. I used to be a magazine reporter. I used to be a television host. And so I was, you know, I spent the first almost 20 years of my professional life in the media. And now that I'm out of it, um, I still like to observe it. Um, however, I have noticed that. I have noticed uh, until recently that I slipped into a like overconsumption of media, overconsumption for for me. And uh, it's, it's frightening how challenging it is to pull away from, from media, just Mm -hmm. this kind of like habit of going to news sites and looking at the the latest stories of the day and being, and and watching people's outrage over certain issues and me, feeling outrage over people's outrage on super issues and politics and things like that. And then it's so prevalent in today's society, like even when you just catch up with family members or friends, that everyone wants to talk about the, the news of the day and so you get sucked back into it. But on those um, on those occasions where I have limited my media exposure, I have definitely f- felt the correlation of increased happiness or if not increased happiness certainly reduced stress and anxiety has that been your your experience yeah absolutely i i have to really create um again it's it's really easy to get sucked in same sort of things there's always stuff going on answering questions or or whatever um and then you're down a rabbit hole and suddenly a whole you've lost time and you're more stressed so it, it really is i i have i have to create pretty strong rules for myself. Otherwise I end up at the end of the day, again, with that big stress monster staring me in the eye. And and then it's harder. It's not that you can't overcome it. I do use yoga nidra and breathing exercises. So, you know, if you do get to that bedtime window and you're absolutely stuck, it's not to say you can't unstick it, but it sure is a whole lot easier if you're managing it throughout the day, instead of kind of hoping at, at bedtime, you can make it, make it work. If you have sleep questions, go ahead and post them in the comments here below. We'd love to answer them. I've got Bianca here asks about decaf coffee. She says, can't live without coffee. Spoken like a true coffee addict. Uh, Bianca, decaf, what do you think, Tara? Yeah, I think, you know, all of those sort of things, you know, I'm a big proponent of balance, whatever that is. So if you can't live without it, you know, try to find a way to do it. But it's it's kind of like sweeteners versus real sugar. And you can get 
really into a heated debate about sweeteners and, you know, trying to fake it because you, you're not willing to give up that sugary soda or that drink. And, you know, it's all about picking the habits and the habits you feel like you're, are, you want to change. So if coffee is affecting your life, then probably it should be targeted as something you want to, to look at or consider. But if it's, if it's not and decaf works and you've got other things on your list you're working on, you know, that's where there shouldn't be sort of that damnation part that goes with health and wellness. It should be, you know, whatever path works for you is really important. So if you've got your decaf and you got your coffee routine, go for it. Yeah. Whatever path works for you, go for it. But I would offer that McDonald's and smoking and, and beer and all that kind of stuff is probably not really working for you. I mean, no, anything that no, we know no. about those things is like you do that, you overdo that, it's probably not, not going to work for you. No, unless um, you're Aunt Winnie, probably not. Mm-hmm. Probably not. Uh, have someone on Facebook here, Pictorial Lane. I quit smoking with the help of a patch. Any chance of a sleep patch happening? Yeah, actually, there are some sleep patches. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the brand. Um, they're very similar to supplements. It's just a, a way of um, dosing the supplements. Um, so there, I'll I'll try to in the follow up notes try to remember the brand for that. But there are there are some sleep patches. There's some great sleep supplements out there. But I would also encourage you, uh, again, they're generally a mix of a bunch of different environments. Uh, melatonin, you know, it's way healthier to wear those blue light glasses or use temperature. Use your body's natural triggers to try to get it first. That is by far the better way um, to do that. But, you know, melatonin, especially with jet lag or as you're trying to reset something, isn't necessarily a bad thing or even some of those supplements. It's just... Um, uh, my, my, at least my opinion for me, I try to, I try to do it every other way before I put anything different in my body. If you're joining us and you would like to test out, uh, one of Tara's, uh, sleep devices, which is the chili pad or the Ula system, uh, we do have some discounts there. So, uh, there's 25% off the chili pad. If you use the code SWANIC25, and we've got a link in, in the comments there, and if you would like to try the ULA system, which is the fancier version, um, then and the and the, the newest version, then we have a code there that says SWANIC15. If you'd like to follow Tara Youngblood for some more uh, sleep tips ongoing, Tara, um, you can follow her on Facebook at uh, sleepgeek.me. That's facebook.com forward slash sleepgeek.me. Uh, uh, and, of course, as always, you can grab a pair of Swanee's Blue Light Blocking Glasses from our uh, Swanee Sleep Store and follow us on uh, Facebook at Swanee's by Swanick. And there's a link there in the comments as well for anything that I just uh, I just referenced. Um, okay, who we got here? Someone's asking on Facebook. I'm curious about the genesis of Chili Pad. What's the story behind the technology? So we um, we touched on that a little bit, but why don't you just touch about you know touch on how this came came to be? Yeah, well, it actually, it's really fun and multi-generational if you consider that Todd's uncle invented the waterbed. Um, and then uh, Todd and I have brought lots of other products to market. So Chili Pad was, was honestly a, a, a natural market niche we saw when people uh, were coming out. Tempur-Pedics, like Comfort, were adjusting pressure in the bed. And at the same time, microclimate control in cars of driver and passenger being able to adjust the temperatures differently. Uh, Todd and I, as I mentioned, both sleep very different temperatures. So we were like, yes, let's put this in the bed because that makes absolute sense to us. Uh, Honestly, we thought it was much more about those comfort metrics, uh, kind of matching to pressure, matching, matching to like adjusting it in a car. It turns out, you know, very similar as we talked about that light and temperature actually talk to your unconscious brain. And so the beauty of temperature or light is unlike a diet where you're like, okay, I have to have willpower. Um, and even as you put those glasses on, it's not like your brain, you're, you have to think through it. You put your glasses on or you set your chili pad, those type of things. That's unconscious. You're, you're, it's talking to your hypothalamus that regulates your heartbeat. You don't suddenly stop beating your heart when you're not thinking about it. It's it's in that same part of your brain, which is pretty magical. And that is amazing. But we didn't know that when we invented it. Uh, it just kind of came across that science kind of came along at the end of it, which is a really good perk, frankly. Yeah, I love that. Love that natural evolution. Well played. Well done, Tara and, and Todd. 
And what about Todd's uncle? <laughs> yes. Who, yeah, who, you can look who, him up as Charles P. Hall. It's the 50th anniversary of the waterbed. So if you ever had one, it's been 50 years since it first came out. Wow. Uh, Elena was saying, hey, uh, I love using herbal herby tea as a coffee replacement, naturally caffeine-free, and often you can use that one. It helps with sleep and relaxation, um, which is great. And Elena is also saying, Tara, do your kids have any sleep? Do your kids have any sleep routines? Uh, this is one of our ha- household struggles as they get older and want to stay up longer, uh, way past when their old parents can stay up. Yeah, <laughs> so this is this is absolutely a big issue for me in um, the U.S. One of the there's multiple reasons why our um, lifetime expectancy has actually been decreasing, um, and unfortunately, a lot of it has to do with under 25 that suicide rate is going up. And the anxiety for our kids is terrible. And they're, they're attaching it to this lack of sleep. And it's, it's not to say that uh, if they don't get one night's sleep, they're going to be suicidal. But that long-term trend of, of not getting good sleep is very harmful for them. Their brains are still developing, especially that prefrontal cortex, all the way up to the age of 25. So there's a real need for them to get good sleep. And electronics whatever that form is of TV and phone and that social for them is a huge driver. Um, Gaming is really big in our house. We have two guys that live and breathe and it is absolutely have had to create rules around it. Um, I'm obviously very neurotic about sleep, but one of the things that all of my boys use now, I started using it and then they kind of came along. We do have a cooling and heating weighted blanket but i will say that weighted blankets is a great way when they say i'm not tired i don't want to go to sleep tucking them in even at the 15 16 17 um literally the 17 year old can't sleep without his weighted blanket um makes it sound he's he's six two so he's not like this little guy he's this big guy he's probably good thing he's not on facebook watching me um but weighted blankets can be a really big uh, lift for them as far as reducing that that spin that they're going through and stopping that racing mind. It's it's a great hack for them. Um, but anything you can do to try to keep their bedtime, they need an enormous amount of sleep in order to keep growing that that brain and that prefrontal cortex. Those that ability to make good decisions um, is really all forming, and we need it. We need to give them good sleep to, to continue to form that properly. What the, how does how does a weighted blanket work? I, I I must admit I haven't dug into this. Like, what what is it about something that's a heavy blanket? Why does that help you sleep? So it's the deep pressure. Um, it was originally started for children with autism, um, and they went through it sort of that deep pressure therapy. Um, but it really it releases serotonin. So when when you have deep pressure, and again, serotonin is one of those um, things that helps you sleep. It helps reduce anxiety. It helps balance that stress monster that we've been talking about. Um, but it is it is amazingly magical. It is kind of like I talked about temperatures, like. Shouldn't be really that easy, but it really is uh, that easy to reduce stress and anxiety just putting something heavy on you. Yeah. I like that. Something heavy on me. So it's yeah. probably not as comfortable as putting a whole bunch of bricks bricks on yourself bricks, then. Bricks would be less comfortable. I would definitely <laughs> start with a blanket before bricks. But uh, my even my, my dog loves the weighted blanket, so now I end up with, like the dog and at least one cat also on there. So they've added extra weight to my weighted blanket regime. Um, How does your chronotype impact deep sleep? And your chronotype uh, refers to your body's internal internal clock. So maybe you could just clarify or just elaborate on that a little bit and, and talk to that, Tara. Yeah, so chronotype, I think it's, is one of the best pieces of health information, easy to get, but it is so empowering when you understand how that works. It works beyond just sleep. It works in everything. And it makes sense that um, any machine, the computers were on, they all have clocks inside. They all are sort of run by that mechanism of a clock. And your body does too. And it's driven by genetics. Your PR, PER3 gene drives it. Um, you can influence it like we talked about with that shift. But it is driven whether you're a morning person or a night person or somewhere in between. And it is a pretty broad spectrum of what that is. You could 
there's a way far morning and way far night and, and lots of people in between. But it's you can take a chronotype quiz online. We have one on our website. We can include in the uh, show notes. But when you understand that, it tells you when that, that bedtime window, that switch timing really helps that. The reason you want to time your sleep to match that and even your nap, because there is also a dip in the afternoon. But again, we talked about that core body temperature dropping. All of your mechanisms are geared towards that. So again, when you flip the switch off properly in the morning by getting outside, saying it's officially off, I'm done sleeping, I'm moving on with my day, you start towards that drive to sleep and you're looking to flip it on. And you, knowing that window means that you've just you've just emphasized your recipe. You've just amplified that result by doing it right. And for deep sleep, again, that window starts when you go to sleep. And it doesn't matter if you've decided to stay up late like you did. Um, if your normal routine, if your body's looking for going to bed at 10 o'clock and you go to bed at 12, unfortunately, it just means two hours less of that deep sleep window. It just makes it much harder to still get deep sleep because it really wants to be in that first half of the night when your body temperature is dropping. Um, REM sleep is usually happier as you're warming up and you can get better REM sleep. That is one watch out with the chili pad. If you get too cold and that's where the Uller helps, um, if you warm it up, you'll actually help your REM sleep in the morning. So that second half of the night, you're emphasizing REM, but it is very temperature driven and it helps, but timing is everything. The power of when, the power of when you do stuff really does matter. Yeah. Let's uh, let's wrap this up as we, we head for home, Tara. I, I, I want to kind of just, close out really with with how we would sleep like a superhero and what i mean is like you know generally speaking what are what's like the gold standard of sleep from when you wake up in the morning and the actions you take or the actions you don't take right up until you go to sleep and then you know hopefully sleep you know many hours of beautiful deep uh, REM restorative sleep. So you wake up in the morning feeling nice and refreshed and restored. Unlike both you and me today, obviously, as we admitted <laughs> at the beginning of the call. Uh, but and, and interesting for different reasons, right? Like, so your reason was you had a, a couple drinks with some friends last night. Um, my reason was I went to bed later than I ordinarily do and got up slightly earlier than I or, ordinarily do. So let's start with uh, an. Let's start with the morning. So first thing in the morning, and I'll kick this off, what I suggest if we're doing a gold standard of sleep is try to get as much natural sunlight as possible. I know I just touched on this a few minutes ago, but first things first, let the sunlight hit your skin, tell your body's internal clock, your circadian rhythm, this is wake up time, and that is going to help you uh, fall asleep and prepare for sleep later on at night. Uh, over to you, Tara, what's next? All right, so this is where I have to give the credit to B.J. Fogg and Tiny Habits. It's a great book if you've never read it. Um, but his philosophy is there's tiny habits throughout the day. So when you're looking for that perfect sleep recipe, it is not in grand gestures. As you said, it could be just getting some sunlight on your skin is enough. So think about what you're doing throughout the day. Um, one of his great analogies is we, uh, on average, a human being uses the restroom seven times during the day. And... What I try to do, even in quarantine, to sort of, I love my kids, but take one extra minute in the restroom and breathe for that minute. Try to do less in than out, whatever works for you. Box breaths, there's multiple different breathing techniques, but, you know, throughout the day, manage that stress monster in all the ways that we talked about. Try to have your heavier meal at lunchtime, all of those kind of things. If you're a morning person and you're going to work out, try to do that earlier in the day. You know, all of those habits build towards that, that bedtime and then cutting off caffeine in the afternoon and cutting off food and alcohol that three hours before you hit your window is, is part of building that ideal day towards sleep. Yeah. Yeah. I think studies have shown that uh, you want to have cut off your caffeine within eight hours of sleep. So if you're going to go to sleep at 10, no coffee after 2 p.m. I mean, mm -hmm. I have a blanket rule. I just don't drink coffee in the afternoon. If I have coffee, 
Um, I mean, I go months and years and, without and thinking. A lot of it's to know. think of the half life, right? So part of it is people like, well, why do you need to cut it off? It's really because that is how long it takes to get out of your system where it's not going to have an influence on your receptors. And so that is part of understanding that it's really, that's how long it takes your body to, to dump that caffeine effect entirely. Even though you feel the buzz of the, the, the caffeine and immediately, it's actually that, that lift and that staying in your body still has an effect on your sleep uh, just because it yeah. takes that long to flush out. Yeah. They've done studies, Tara, that show that people who exercise in the morning tend to sleep better as well. And they believe it's because of two reasons. One, because people who exercise in the morning tend to do it more as a habit, just like you referenced BJ Fogg there, the, the world's leading habits expert. Um, when you're exercising in the morning, you tend to do it more regularly before life gets in the way. And people who exercise regularly tend to be healthier overall, which helps them sleep overall. And then also because you, you don't want to sleep closer to bedtime because it raises your core body temperature, which we know um, is anti conducive to um to uh you know great a, a great night's sleep uh so i like to exercise um in the morning not for everyone but i certainly like to do that that keeps me feeling healthy and strong and i find that it helps me sleep at night um no caffeine in the afternoon uh gratitude anything you can do to reduce stress and anxiety throughout the day you came up with a few great things um, one of the things you referenced there before about BJ Fogg, it's interesting we use the bathroom, we flush the toilet seven times a day. BJ Fogg actually has this system where you, you create a little rule for yourself. It's like when I X, I will X and celebrate with X. Mm -hmm. So what you could do is when I flush the toilet, I will think of three things to be grateful for and I will celebrate by washing my hands. Yes. And that would and now you've created a whole new habit. And if you, and that's if that's seven times you're using the bathroom each day and three things to be grateful for, you've just knocked over your daily 20, your 20 things to be grateful for in a day. Yeah, it, it, his, his philosophy is just magical that way. It isn't, and uh, he has a great, um, I think, new emotion uh, called shine. And it's a great sense because, you know, when you think of you being proud of yourself or whatever, but that moment of like shine and uh, he say that, you know, it's, it could be as simple as throwing that paper towel and hitting that basket. You have a moment of like, Oh, that felt good. Um, that feeling reinforces habits. So anytime you can attach that little bit of shine, that little bit of reward, that little bit of feel good at the end, that just reinforces those healthy habits and well, it feels good. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, at nighttime, block as much blue light and artificial light as possible. Our bodies weren't designed to be subjected to all of this artificial light, uh, especially at nighttime, um, which disrupts our sleep pattern. So wear a pair of the Swanee's blue light blocking glasses. There's a link in the comments here below where, or wherever it is where you can go and check out our range of blue light blocking glasses. I'm wearing the classic pair uh, at the moment. Uh, and then certainly um, try out the chili pad and the Aula system, which Tara and her husband uh, Todd have created, uh, which can control the temperature of your sleep or the temperature of your bed and therefore your body's temperature as you sleep um, throughout, throughout the night. And we've put a link up there just a reminder that if you'd like 25% off the chili pad, there's a link there. And if you'd like 15% off the upgraded Aula system, there is a link there as well. Um, let's do a just Two more quick fire away questions here. Question is coming from uh, Melanie. It says my kids don't use uh, uh, thick blankets, but they can't sleep with a, with a, without at least three pillows under their heads. Is there any harm in letting them do that? I try to take one out when they fall asleep, but they wake up. No, you know, I think it's really interesting. They're actually that you're seeing it um, in some of those uh, adjustable beds, um, actually for people that are snoring, um, having a little bit of incline can actually help. Um, and actually, we've had uh, one of our boys has asthma. And when he would get congested, we would absolutely prop them up because it can help you breathe. It doesn't really hurt them. So as long as they're not doing anything funky, but kids are magical. You'll see a baby sleep, like fr frankly, arms, head over heels, backwards, upside down, just about, and they're still sleeping fine. So, you know, sleep is sleep is sleep. And what, what feels good is, is generally the right thing. If you're getting good yeah. sleep, it's, it's right. Probably. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Tara. So appreciate you joining us here and for your words of expertise on all things 
sleep. Uh, where can we follow you on social media? I think you have a pretty cool Instagram page, right? Yeah. So there, I think that looks like they're popping up on the screen there. You can also find my book on Amazon. I think every book in the world on Amazon just bought, but you can find my book, Reprogram Your Sleep there as well. And if you're not much of a reader, the TEDx talk kind of gives you the cheap version uh, in about 16 minutes. So just go to YouTube, TEDx YouTube channel, and you can get the cheater version that way. Yeah, and there's some links in the uh, comments here below where you can follow Tara on, on Twitter and a link to her book, and you can follow her on her Instagram and on her Facebook page. We've got, we've got the young young boy behind us. He wants to insert him. He wants to be a television anchor. You want him to be ah. on the show? Come on. Come on. Up you come. Let's go. Oh, hello. There you go. I'm very boy friendly. We we had <laughs> between four boys, and then we always seem to. Um, Todd teases me. I, I collect lost boys, so I've been a <laughs> parent and had other boys over the years that have come to live with us. Um, so I, I tend to collect boys. I'm not sure why. I don't have a problem against girls, um, but for whatever <laughs> reason, um, they end up on my doorstep. So. Pretty well, Alana, uh, Elena Frederick from our uh, from Swanick Sleep likes to collect boys as well. So between you two, you could run a whole boys commune. I think. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Actually, I, I I dream of retiring and uh, having a farm and goats and like total natural experience. And I, I keep thinking that that'll be a good place to collect boys that will show up. <laughs> well, Tara, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your expertise. I so appreciate you. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Have a great day.